boys and girls. Today, I'm going to show you how you can learn to draw the mysterious statues that can be found on Easter Island. Just watch. I'm starting to draw one of my Moai heads. That's what you call these large statues that are found on Easter Island. Easter Island is an island that is found in the South Pacific. It is part of the country of Chile, which is in South America. Before we get into some more facts about this beautiful island, with its archaeological treasures, I need you to do a few things for me. I need you to like my video, subscribe, hit the bell, and share my video with a friend. There is also a book available, and I will leave a link in the description and any supplies that are used in the making of this video. The book is called, Where is Easter Island? And it is by the author, Megan Stein. Where is Easter Island? <laughs> All right. It's time to start finding some more information about the mystery of the Moai and Easter Island. Starting to work on my second figure and the background, but let's start talking a little bit more about Easter Island. Also called Rapa Nui, is a Polynesian island in the Pacific, more than 2,000 miles off of the coast of Chile. It is believed to be that Polynesian people settled on the island more than a thousand years ago. When Dutch explorer Jacob Rodgeveen discovered the island on Easter Sunday in 1722. He was astonished to find that the island was covered with hundreds of mysterious giant stone heads. These huge statues are called Moai and there are nearly 900 of them on the island. They are believed to be between 500 and 750 years old. All of them, most of them are on a coast with their backs to the sea. Most archeologists believe they were meant to represent the spirits of chiefs or ancestors. And so archeologists must rely on clues that were left behind and on the stories handed down generation to generation by the people on the island. Each statue is made out of a single huge piece of stone, although some statues, an extra piece of stone on the top of their head, carved into the top knot, are 13 feet or 4 meters high and weigh between 12 and 13 tons. Each is over 32 feet or 9.8 meters tall and weighs 82 tons. Although statues are most often referred to as heads, most of them have bodies which are buried underground up to their shoulders and many more were tipped over. There are no unburied statues left standing now. All erect and some have been restored to look as they did hundreds of years ago. The island is made up of three extinct volcanoes and a variety of volcanic matter which are suited for carving the gigantic statues. The main quarry called Ranke Raku 
an archaeologist estimates that 95% of the statues came from here. The vast majority of Moai were carved from materials called tuff, a type of rock from compressed volcanic ash. This type of rock is soft and easy to carve, but less durable than other stones, making the Moai vulnerable to its environment. Hundreds are partially finished. Statues are around the island. Some appear had to have been abandoned when the carvers reached chunks of harder rock that they could not carve through, while others were unfinished. When the people of Easter Island decided to stop all statue building, one statue at the quarry would have been the largest ever made if it had been finished. It would have been 71 feet and more than 21 meters high and weighed more than 270 tons. Oh my goodness, archaeologists believe that the people of Easter Island transported them by rolling them on tree trunks. Now you may have noticed that there are not many trees on Easter Island. That is because the people who lived there chopped down so many trees that one day they ran out and there were no more trees at all. Once the trees, they could not move any more statues. Today, much of Easter Island is protected in Rapa Nui National Park. This means the park which contains many of the Moai as well as the um, quarry and other sites are considered so interesting that they should be protected and preserved for people of the whole world to learn about. I hope you enjoyed learning about the mysterious Moai of Easter Island. Well, I'm starting to lay down my grassy background, working on the second Moai head that's in the foreground. And there will be a third one, a very small one in the background. I had a little problem with that. I didn't like my placement of it earlier. So I had to take it out and I'm going to put it in after I finish this one. Uh, my main head is almost done. I still have a little bit to do. I'm not happy with how the eyes are laying in there. I'm going to go back in and darken the eyes a little bit more so they can be just right. I do like my stone landscaping back. I love the purples and the fuchsias that are coming out. As you see, I'm using my pencil now to lay in a slight outline for my last Moai head. It's going to be basically, um, you would call it a silhouette of it since it's so far in the background and much farther in the distance than the rest of them. Today I'm working with oil pastel. You normally see me working with marker, but oil pastel gives me the ability to blend and to blend colors and to lay layers down. And uh, I really enjoy that. It's often very good for artists to use different materials even materials sometimes you're not as comfortable with because unless you use them you'll never get comfortable with them i myself i prefer the dry pastels but i have i did a smaller study i did a couple smaller studies before i did this one with the oil pastels and i really like the way it was coming out so I said I'd use it for you today. And I'm really enjoying this. They move so well. The colors just move so well. And um, just having the Moai as my inspiration. And you see I have lots and lots of photographs to look at. This is one of the places 
that is on my bucket list to visit. Although I think it's going to be a long, long trip. I want to thank one of our family friends for giving me some photographs to use. We have a friend that is a world-renowned marathonist, and the thing about it, she runs marathons all over the world, and she ran one in Easter Island and brought me the small little statue that I showed in the beginning of my video and sent me some more photographs that I used in the video and in making my drawing. So Donna, thank you so much. Big shout out to you. I'm almost done. Getting ready to put my last few marks in. few little highlights and I'm done. Boys and girls, what do you think? Did I do a good job? I really enjoyed this. I hope you would try doing these Moai statues. It was a lot of fun. Hey, boys and girls, thank you so much for coming back to see Mr. Smith in the art room today. And I hope you had a great time learning how to draw the statues from Easter Island. I had a wonderful time doing it. I don't work with oil pastel a lot, but I had a lot of fun. So I hope you get a chance and try too. Just remember, do a few things for Mr. Smith. Like my video, subscribe, hit that bell, and share this with somebody. Tell somebody about Mr. Smith's Art Room for Kids, okay? Well, I thank you for coming again, and I'll see you next time. So long. Bye-bye.